When Barbie first debuted, it became a cultural sensation. People of all ages, from mothers to daughters, sisters and friends, donned pink attire and eagerly flocked to local theaters to witness their beloved Barbie doll spring to life. However, the film's narrative goes beyond mere adventures with Barbie and Ken. It delves into themes of patriarchy and power struggles between genders. While it ostensibly champions girl power, it also satirically portrays the potential pitfalls of extreme modern feminism, offering clever and thought-provoking commentary. Yet, the majority of the audience comprises children who may not grasp these nuanced jokes, taking the film at face value. Unfortunately, this can lead to a troubling perception of a pervasive anti-masculinity theme, exemplified by the movie poster where Ken is relegated to the backseat, highlighting Barbie's dominance throughout the film. This image serves as a powerful symbol of the movie's underlying themes. The movie opens with young girls abandoning their baby dolls, influenced by Barbie's message that they no longer need to play the role of mothers. Throughout the film, motherhood is often derided. The narrator sarcastically remarks, thanks to Barbie, all feminist and equal rights issues are solved. However, as the story unfolds in Barbieland, it becomes evident that there are no equal rights there. Instead, Barbie Land operates as an oppressive regime where Kens are marginalized and barred from positions of authority. The pink house stands as the symbol of this regime's power, devoid of any male presence. The film portrays the United States as a place where women are severely restricted, contrary to the notion of equality. Barbie claims, women hold all major positions of power and control all of the money, contrasting with the real Supreme Court of the United States, which has five men and four women justices. The movie raises questions about whether Barbie's interpretation of the real world is flawed, or if it's normalizing a society that rejects masculinity. In Barbie land, men face mistreatment, including being told to be quiet and emasculated both physically and mentally, relegated to cheerleading roles instead of participating in sports. While Barbie Land is an openly sexist place, it is presented as a good place. We even hear Lizzo singing the praises of Barbie Land at the beginning of the movie. Yes, this Lizzo. Hypocrisy. Barbie's rejection of Ken's kiss sets the tone for their far from happy relationship in the movie. Prior to the film's release, Barbie and Ken were known as a cheerful content couple, with Ken content to bask in Barbie's spotlight and ride in their pink cars. However, in the movie, their relationship takes a sharp turn. Ken becomes clingy, jealous, possessive, and insecure, solely focused on impressing Barbie, while she condescends to him as if he were intellectually challenged. The film lacks a single portrayal of a happy relationship, as it revolves around power struggles rather than love and partnership. As Barbie ventures to the real world, Ken's unwelcome presence in the car becomes evident, and when he seeks a seat in the front, Barbie curtly declines, eliciting audience laughter. The movie villainizes men in general, portraying them as antagonists rather than individuals or groups. When we first heard about the Barbie movie, most of us probably imagined a fun adventure involving Barbie and Ken. But that's not what happened at all. The main plot of the movie is literally about fighting the patriarchy. That heavily charged word is constantly used during the movie, to the point that it loses its meaning. The official definition of patriarchy is Social organization marked by the supremacy of the father in the clan or family, the legal dependence of wives and children, and the reckoning of descent and inheritance in the male line. Merriam-Webster Is America an actual patriarchy? That is very highly debatable. That term probably cannot even apply in a society that is as wide and diverse as the United States. When Barbie and Ken arrive in the real world, Los Angeles to be exact, they discover an all-out patriarchy with absolutely no nuance. Ken feels immediately at home, while Barbie says that men are looking at her with an undertone of violence. Every single man in Los Angeles aggressively catcalls Barbie, including these stereotypical frat boys. Is there a single normal guy in the real world? No. 
The movie presents the real world as a place where it is impossible to be a woman. At one point, America Ferreira gives a long speech where she actually says that it is literally impossible to be a woman. At one point, America says. You have to find a way to reject men's advances without damaging their egos. Because if you say yes to them, you're a tramp. But if you say no, you're a prude. Do they really need to include this weird bit in a movie intended for children? Later, the movie has a reckoning moment when a schoolgirl shames Barbie for her shameful past. Barbie leaves in tears after a 14-year-old girl roasts her entire existence. The girl accuses Barbie of sexualized capitalism and of killing the planet with the glorification of rampant consumerism. She also calls her a fascist. Mass media critics praise this monologue, where the buzzwords capitalism, consumerism, and killing the planet were used to let us know that Barbie is woke now. But, about three minutes later, this happens. Barbie enters a brand new vehicle, which is a clear paid product placement. Then, for a few minutes, the movie turns into a full-on ad for the Chevy Blazer, the ultimate SUV for fighting the patriarchy. In other words, the movie glorifies rampant consumerism, while also complaining about it. Meanwhile, Ken learns about the patriarchy, and he's very happy about it. Ken talks with a corporate business guy about men's stuff. Here's the dialogue between the two. Ken says. I'll take a high-level, high-paying job with influence, please. You'll need at least an MBA, and a lot of our people have PhDs. Isn't being a man enough? Actually, right now, it's kind of the opposite. You guys are clearly not doing patriarchy very well. No, we're doing it well. We just hide it better now. Note. No two men have ever discussed doing patriarchy. Ever. However, Ken is a dumb doll. And Barbie hurt his feelings, so he imported his version of patriarchy to Barbieland. When she comes back to Barbieland, Barbie discovers that men are actually gas playing volleyball. The horror. To reverse Ken's patriarchy, Barbies get abducted into a truck where they are deprogrammed or reprogrammed by America Ferreira, who talks about how it's impossible to be a woman. The final stage of the Barbie's plan to regain power is just mean. The plan involves giving Kens the love and attention they crave by listening to them sing a song. Then they crush their spirit by chatting with another guy and leaving them. The Barbies say, give them their dream come true. And, at the peak of their happiness, when they think you actually care about this song, you take it all away. Does this scene teach little girls to be hypocrites, mean-spirited, and manipulative to obtain what they want? In the end, the plan works, and the Barbie system of oppression is restored. Yay. At one point, a Ken says. Madam President. Please may the Kens have one Supreme Court Justice. I can't do that. Yes, the happy ending of the movie involves Madam President telling men that they still cannot have a single judge on the Supreme Court. At the end of the movie, Barbie ascends to a form of godhood. Barbie meets her creator and becomes a real woman. What about Ken? He cried a lot and stayed in Barbie land. Cue the credits with the song Barbie World by Nicki Minaj, featuring I Spice. One line from the song. That is so cold, we just chillin' out. Barbie is a feminist movie that also critiques feminism. Barbie Land is the result of plastic dolls taking modern-day feminism to its logical conclusion. And it is quite absurd. On the other hand, it actually works. And that's what most children will take out from the movie. In a way, Barbie Land reflects the type of society the elite is trying to impose on the world. They want feeble, insecure and emasculated men. They want a system where it is socially acceptable to exclude people due to their identity. They want a society where a strong, loving nuclear family is non-existent, only a collection of deeply confused individuals. Barbie doesn't really know what she wants or who she is, while Ken is in a state of complete agony because he doesn't feel hurt or loved. While some will interpret Barbie as a critique of today's society, most of its young viewers will simply absorb the values of Barbie land. Therein lies the underhanded and hypocritical messaging found in Barbie. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? 
If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.